Welcome back for another session on the CR30 programmable safety relay. Uh, we're doing circuits. Uh, we've done, we keep adding on to what we have. We have an e stop, we have a um, enabling, handheld enabling switch, we have feedback, and now we want to add reset to our circuit so we can reset with a operator intervention rather than just pulling out the e stop which is much more deterministic and actually requires a more purposeful endeavor to reset the e-stop. So let's go have a look at this circuit. Let's do a little more electrical design and add another element to our safety circuit and we're going to add a reset. Now remember all the diagrams from the manual, they show everything starting at input zero, safety input zero they're not accumulating elements into their safety circuit. We are. So we've used zero and one for the e-stop, two and three for the enabling switch. We used four for the feedback. And now I guess we'll use five for the reset. This is our new hardware configuration. We haven't really added that much, but just to kind of review what we do have, this is our handheld enabling switch and this is the e-stop that we're using. It's a twist to release. And we came off of 12 and 13, which are the pulse test outputs on yellow and purple to the e-stop and also to our enabling switch. For our feedback, we're coming right off of 24 volts DC through that red wire over to the common contact for this relay, out the normally closed, in the common, out the normally closed, and then we're going into input number four. For our reset button, we're using this blue button right here. We're using the orange and yellow wires coming off of that contact block, and we're feeding this switch with that red wire right there, going directly from positive to the switch, then coming out of the switch through the orange wire and over to the next available uh, safety input, which is input number five. So that's really all that we have. I know it's starting to get congested, trying to keep it as neat as we can. This is a real simple addition. We're going to add a safety monitor mon monitoring we're going to add a safety monitoring function, an SMF, right over here in this green space. So we'll go to Toolbox, and we're looking for Reset. So we grab it, drag it over here, and notice it pops up with the next unused embedded input, which happens to be 5. Coincidentally, that's what we wired it to. And so that's finished. The reset is finished as far as the input from the outside world for the reset. The only other thing to do is to go up here to our safety output and switch it to manual. And then it's going to ask, what's your reset input? Well, there's only one that's configured over here, SMF4. If I had not already added this, nothing would show up here. So we select that and we're done. It's just simple as that. So let's save it. Go back to our CR30 tab, download. Oh, we have to go online. Okay, now, <laughs> there was a time in the past when I tried to do this and it wouldn't let me do it. So I'm, it's asking me to select download to where. So I pick my CR30, say okay. I was surprised when it didn't do it before. In other words, typically in CCW, you don't have to do a build you can just do a download or you can do a build then a download but when you do a download it does a build anyway and if it doesn't like what you've done it lets you know performing a download will change the safety relay to the program mode the existing safety verification id will be deleted that's just business up here when we come back this is going to be ungrayed out we're going to have to redo it so you say yes i heard it click successful do you want to 
change the relay back to the run mode, yes. Now I'm going to verify it. I'm going to check off all these boxes as if I've done this. Once you check them all off, you can hit generate. Okay. And it was successful. Do you want to change it back to the run mode? Yes. Go into edit logic. And there we are. So our feedback is good. Everything is good. Let's do an e-stop. Now, nothing turned red because, remember, pushing the e-stop is not a faulted condition. The fact that everything's either grayed out or green means that everything is normal. Now, I'm going to pull the e-stop back out. And you notice that the immediate off is not green. It's flashing green-gray. That's because it needs reset. Remember, the reset type now is manual. So I'm going to push, push the blue button. And now we're reset. Now how simple was that? Let's look at the hardware. Looking at the hardware, a quick, quick reminder. Uh, yellow and purple feeds our enabling switch and our e-stop switch with test pulses. Our feedback is running straight from 24 volts DC through these two relays through normally closed contacts and then into input four. We are running 24 volts DC through this red wire along the bottom over to one contact block on this blue switch and from here through the orange wire up to input five. That is our reset button. So let's operate this circuit. Push the e-stop. See, these went off. Reset it. It didn't reset. Push the reset button and it's reset. E-stop doesn't reset it. Reset button. Notice that it resets it when I release it. So release that. It doesn't reset. Push it in. It does not reset. But when I release it, then it resets. Real simple. Well, all done. That was short and sweet. We're done with this particular project. The next session, we're going to start from scratch with a whole different application, but you'll recognize all the players. We're going to use a SensorGuard door switch, e-stop. We'll probably include some of the other players as well, but we may hook them up to different I.O. points. However, we're done with this one. So we'll see you in the next session. Thank you very much for watching.